The topic of this presentation is 16th century German style bindings from the special collections of the University of Bergen Library. Particular attention would be given to the study of bound manuscripts and books of Bergen origin. The special collections of the University Library in Bergen trace their history to 1825 when Bergen Museum was established. It was started by the intellectual Wilhelm Koren Christi, who as president of the parliament traveled around Norway in the first half of the 19th century gathering artifacts that had visual, cultural, natural, historical, and philological significance. A new building for the collection was constructed in 1898 and included cultural history, natural history, and the library. In 1898, the library was moved to the southern wing with the reading room on the second floor and the storage on the top floor. Later, the library was moved to the Library of Humanities on the right and in 2005 was housed in the Faculty of Humanities seen on the left. The first examples of historical bookbinding date from the 16th century, the period of Reformation. By then, Bergen was the Norwegian center for the Hanseatic League, which traded dried cod to the rest of Europe. The Hanseatic League was present in the city from the 14th until the 19th century, and Bergen was often called the German town. The name Bergen is actually a German modification of Björgvin, the original Norwegian name. Norway became part of the Kingdom of Denmark after the plague of 1380 and remained united with Denmark until 1817. Lutheranism was officially established as the national religion by Christian II in 1536 in Denmark and in 1537 in Norway. The common Lutheran religion further contributed to the German influence in printing and bookbinding in both countries. The majority of books from the 16th century in the collection mostly demonstrate the tradition from Denmark as well as Germany. Norway was equipped with a printing house only in 1643. However, bookbinding workshops started operating in big cities like Christiania, which is now Oslo, Trondheim and Bergen from the early 16th century, as it was necessary to bind accounting records to be sent for tax inspection to Copenhagen, the capital. Most of those bookbinders were foreigners. And the list of citizens working in Bergen mentions, for example, the bookbinder Jesper Telemann in 1558 and another Abraham Sebisher in 1584. There were too few bookbinders to form a guild, one to three per city, so they belonged to guilds from other countries like Sweden or Denmark. The book historian Astrid Bugge, in her book from 1927, speaks about two schools of bookbinding, like a that are recognizable in Bergen, an early one that lasted until 1587, in which Abraham Sebisher must have been the principal binder, and another after 1587. Boogie says those early bindings are only found in the Royal Library of Denmark and University Library of Oslo, and not present in Bergen. The second school of book binding is represented by two found manuscripts preserved in the University of Bergen Library. The first manuscript, MS 50, is a combination of theological and biblical excerpts written by Søren Christensen, a priest in Akvall and Sunfjord. This manuscript is dated 1592 and is one of the oldest acquisitions in the collection. But the catalogue compiled in 1913 doesn't indicate its provenance. The second manuscript, 558, is a Danish-Norwegian translation from Old Norse of the Gulating Law, the compilation of laws for Western Norway that existed since the 10th century and through various modifications was still in force until the end of the 17th century. The translation was necessary as the original language was no longer understood in 16th century Norway. 
This manuscript was written in 1588 by the city scribe Martin Nilsson and bound around 1590. It came to the Bergen Museum in 1915 from the Alvern farm in Sogn. It had been the possession of Uli Elias Holk, a colleague of Christie, who collaborated with him in collecting medieval documents such as charters for the museum. Both manuscripts show Renaissance inboard binding of German style. They are sewn on double raised cords and have blind tooling decoration on the cover. MS50 in brown calfskin, MS558 in white alum toad, possibly sheepskin. Both are quite worn and have multiple damages from centuries of use. For the sake of the study of the binding, conservation has not yet been undertaken. Researcher Matthias Tweitane identified those two manuscripts as having been bound by the same person or workshop. From the bookbinder's stamp, or H. So far it is not known who stand who might stand behind those letters. In Oslo, Copenhagen and Stockholm, three other bindings have the same OH stamp, but they will not be part of the study. Tweitene also points out that the stamp depicting the prophet David has the letters J and K. And he suggests that it belonged to Jakob Krausen, the famous bookbinder at the court of Elector August of Saxony, who raised bookbinding to a high level of artistry. Although Jakob Krause was dead by 1588, Tweitner supposes that the Bergen bookbinder, O.H., might have been trained or worked within the Krause circle and could have brought those stamps with him to Bergen. It hasn't been previously noticed that besides the O.H. stamps, there are stamps that depict elements of the coat of arms of Saxony in the first border of the central panel. These are an eagle, a rampant lion, and a striped shield with Gothic crancelline, each repeated twice. These are found in both manuscripts on the front and back cover, although without following a specific order. Similar stamps are seen on the full coat of arms that was blind tooled by Jakob Krause to Elector Augustus on the left, as the one seen here from the Darmstadt Library. A similar coat of arms is found on the Lexicon Hebraicum in the University of Bergen Library in the middle. It was printed and bound in Wittenberg in 1568 by Schreiber Wittenberger. The present task is to study these two manuscripts from the point of view of bookbinding archaeology as well as stamp designs and compare them with inboard blind tool bindings from Germany, particularly Saxony, to see if this tradition might be traced in these manuscripts and thus indicate the origin of training of the OH master. Alternatively, the binder might have secured the stamps without having trained in this school. The manuscripts are of similar size. The Bible extracts manuscript is just two centimeter longer than the Gulatings long and they're the same in width and, it, and thickness. Both are sewn on four double raised cords with link stitch without bypass. There is 3.5 centimeters between the cords, plus or minus two millimeters, and the head and tail's ends are just either four or 4.5 centimeters. It is not understood why in one manuscript tail end is longer, while in the other it is the reverse. In the study of other manuscripts, no particular system could be observed. Some had taller head, others taller tail end, or they could be even. Based on the diagram from Sirmer, the sewing in both manuscripts may be identified as type A, sewn around both coats through a single hole. In already mentioned Librar Q24, found in Wittenberg in 1568, we can see the same type of sewing. The difference between the Bergen manuscripts and Saxonian binding is that German one has more regular sewing, while MS50 show unevenness in thread tension. For both manuscripts, 
A transverse lining was applied with glue on the spine. Long strips of parchment were cut and adhered in between the supports, while the loose ends were attached on the inside of the boards. This can be seen on the crack of the leather covering on the spine of MS-558 and under the paste downs. And under the paste downs. In the case of this particular manuscript, the binder employed unused white parchment. In MS-50, excess glue is seen, but this could be the result of subsequent repairs. In Librar Q24, a transverse lining made of recycled parchment manuscript is clearly visible due to the detached cover. The investigation of these fragments could be another area of research. The lacing of the cords into the wooden boards seemed to be done the same way for most of the German-style books of that period in the collection. In Librar 53, Wittenberg 1585, paste down is detached and the construction of the lacing is clearly visible. Holes for the lacing are cut to the same size and spaced equidistantly, and slips are fixed in the holes with a wooden wedge that sits at the further end of the spine. leaf construction is not always possible to judge. In MS-558, several sheets of paper in front and back were cut out. In MS-50, paste down and end leaf form a separate choir made of the undecorated paper, and this end leaf construction falls in category P, according to Sirmoy. Books of German origin, like the above-mentioned Librar Q24, shows type I, while Q53, Bible for Wittenberg 1585, is type R. In all of these examples, end leaf and paste down are made exclusively of paper. However, comparing with Danish bindings, we find parchment that was often introduced to add strength in end leaf construction. The end bands in this manuscript and all other German style bindings in the collection are exclusively stuck on. Two strips of parchment were cut, sewn at the top, as primary embroidered end band in two colors with front bead, and then adhered to the head and tail of the spine. Adhesion often fails, and end bands become detached or completely lost. The difference in end bands may be seen primarily in the choice of color threads. Both MS-50 and 558 are made in this way, and are embroidered with white and dark beige threads. For the sake of comparison with other Saxonian bindings, Librar Q73 is another book that quite probably was also printed and bound in Wittenberg, 1557. And it has the same type of primary embroidered end bond in white and dark beige colors as our Bergen manuscripts. Edges are differently treated in these two manuscripts. MS-50 are not colored, while 558 has an even application of vermilion red color. Danish and German books also have color variations. There is no particular preference. Some are uncolored, some have red, and some have brown coloration. Covers appear to be made of beech, like most German books with wooden boards. MS-50 is evenly thick, 8 millimeters thick throughout, while MS-558 is 8 millimeters thick at the foredge and a bit more beveled at the spine. Outer beveling has the same profile as depicted in Sirmoy diagram, type L. It has three in interrupted bevelings in the middle of the three free edges, with a small carved indentation at the side of each catch plate on the foredge. Flat corners were left for metal furnishings. This can be seen on Librar Q53 on the left, which, doesn't have corn, which does have corner bosses. Both Wittenberg books on boards have the same type of beveling profile here on the picture. Sir so may quotes Curis. 
A combination of interrupted outer bevels with a full-length flat inner bevel along the free edges had begun to appear around the 1480s and became standard in Germany in, in the early 16th century. Another characteristic feature of late Gothic and Renaissance bindings is the presence of squares, a space between the edge of the board and the text block. To be called a square, it has to be more than six millimeters deep. In both Bergen manuscripts, there is a sharply cut inner bevel with a large square of one centimeter deep, which is quite large for octavo format. This seems to be a characteristic feature for books of the OH master. Most other books of similar size have squares less than one centimeter deep. Both, both Bergen manuscripts have hook clasp fastening with the catch plate at the front cover, like most of the German style bindings. As Sirme says, it consists of a catch plate attached to the board edge and a movable clasp in the shape of a hoop riveted to strip, anchored to the end of the opposite board. All of the German style bindings, those from Bergen and Wittenberg, have a similar catch plate, which is elongated and ends in a point. There are various decorations made with engraved lines and concentric, concentric circles. Although the catch plates on the two Bergen manuscripts are very similar in design and form, they're not exactly the same. Only the Danish manuscript demonstrate a very distinct style with the wider outer end. The hook is still preserved only on one manuscript, MS50. A thick piece of leather is riveted between two plates of the clasp. Returning to the cover design, the front cover of MS50 can be described as having a central oval image of justicium, holding a scale and a sort of judgment. On the blind tool binding from Frankfurt, 1571, Darmstadt Library, there is the same central image of justicium, and all the details of this fashionable lady can be seen more clearly. The design, the design of the 16th century dress, plumage in the head, and a net covering hair. On the back cover is the image of Lucretia with an open breast, thrusting a dagger in her chest. Lucretia was a noble woman in Rome who committed a suicide after being raped, and that led to a revolt and change of government from monarchy to republic. Both images allude to virtues that are often encountered in Lutheran art and speak to the sense of justice and moral strength that alone can change the world. Both central oval images and decorative branches in the corners are gilded. Jakob Krause has been famous for introducing gold tooling in his bindings, a tradition he learned from French bookbinders. The charm of this Bergen binding is that on both covers, the central oval is not perfectly in the middle and not absolutely straight, the figure leaning, leaning a bit to the left. The next border from the center includes the above-mentioned stamps of the OH Master, the coat of arms of Saxony, and the fathers of the Reformation. Martin Luther, his fallen philosopher Philip Melanchthon, Erasmus of Rotterdam, Reformation predecessor Jan Hus, and a few others. The identification is based on comparison with stamps from other bindings that have similar portraits with their name above them. This decorative frame is composed of the same stamps for both Bergen manuscripts, but not all of the portraits on MS588 can be read, as the cover hasn't been well preserved. One specific feature of Saxonian bindings is that the portraits are arranged so that one face looks to the right and the next to the left, and this is followed throughout. Other German and Danish bindings might use similar stamps, but they're not so systematic. The last row closest to the edge consists of the prophet David playing the harp, Christ blessing and holding an orb of the universe in hand, St. John the Baptist with the book, and St. Paul with the sword. The stamps, the stamps strictly follow this order clockwise. The same stamps in the same order are also found in other German book bindings and are based on the woodcut illustrations produced by Lucas Cranach workshop in Wittenberg. 
Each image has a code, coded reference from the Bible underneath. In Lutheran understanding, these words are not these words and not the images carry most of the meaning, since according to Luther, salvation comes through hearing and not through sight. Under the image of David is written, The fruit of thy womb I will set up on thy throne. Thus David here is not represented as a composer of psalms, but as the ancestor of Christ naturally follows the image of Jesus Christ holding the universe in hand. His words are, All power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go ye therefore to teach all nations. And St. John is a quote from the Gospel of St. John. Um, this is lamb that removes sin. He is followed by St. Paul with his identifiable sword of faith. With the word, when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. St. Paul's writings play an important role in Lutheranism and this notion of grace, the love of God that grants salvation, regardless of our personal efforts, takes a central place in Lutheran teaching. Thus a certain iconography emerges from these stamps. One should cultivate virtues of justice and faithfulness in one's spiritual work toward salvation, and these are elucidated by the Fathers of Reformation based on the teaching of the Bible. This seems appropriate to a manuscript of Bible extracts and commentaries. While studying the inbound books of the 16th century, it was discovered that Librar Q14 has many similarities with MS15. Librar Q14 is gradually a book of psalms and other chants sung at the church service that include words and music notation that was published in Copenhagen in 1606. There is a central oval with a gilded image of the crucifixion. Again, like MS50, the central image is slightly crooked on off center. The decorated frames consist of the same stamp as an MS-15, the prophet David with the same letters J and K. On the side, Christ with the orb, St. John the Baptist and St. Paul with the sword. Outside border is made of palmettes, very common design motif that was previously identified as part of O.H. Max arsenal. There is no H stamp and no coat of arms of Saxony. Debrar Q14 and MS50 have both inboard bindings and double raised cords sewn without bypass in calf skin. In both bindings, edges are not colored. Boards are made of beech wood and have large squares. Graduale is a quarto, while manuscript of Bible extract is an octavo. In Graduale, the squares are even larger than an MS50 and reach 1.3 cm. As pointed out earlier, these large squares may be seen as a distinctive feature of age master. The boards have the same inter interrupted profile as the other two Bergen manuscripts in German books, but a deeper indentation was made here for accommodation of catch plates and clasps than in other bindings. The fastenings were not preserved. There are some nails and marks on the leather that show that the catch plate was also elongated and pointed as on the books as on the other manuscripts, but it was wider and longer. The end band is the same stuck on, but the binder used white and blue thread instead of white and beige. The new materials introduced to the workshop 14 years after MS50 was bound, but still many elements point on the same hand, and this book could be included as the product of the OH master or his workshop. The blind tool design of the alum Todd binding of MS558 is harder to read since the cover is badly worn. The central image depicts a kneeling King David, his hands raised in prayer while the harp rests at his side. God the Father with the orb in his left hand stretches his right hand towards David. The words on the arch above him say, Lord, who can resist thy wrath? And the David is the quote from the psalm. Lord, hear my prayer and enter not into judgment with thy servant. On the back cover, there is a standard image of Annunciation. 
These stamps could be alluding to the ideals of divine mercy and grace that alone can grant salvation. The next border surrounding the image consists of small portraits amidst foliage. Twizener suggests that this could be Roman poets. Some of them do have laurel leaves, laurel wreaths, sorry, but others seem to have helmets and thus could represent military figures. The next row depicts Fathers of Reformation, the coat of arms of Saxony, and the personal stamp of the Master Age, which was seen before. The last row is a decorative row with plant motifs. While conducting a survey of the collection, another book was found that appeared very similar to MS 558. It is Librar 282, Epidicope Evangelio, or abbreviated sections of the Gospels to be read at public services composed by the Protestant theologian Johannes Brenz. It was printed in Oberursel in 1570 and bound in 1585. It is smaller in size than other Tubergen manuscripts. As three double raised bands, the spacing between the bands at the tail end and hand end are all 3.5 centimeters, just as in between the middle bands of the two other Bergen manuscripts. The edges are colored red, the same as MS-558. The covers are made of pasteboard, not wood, with several layers of paper glued together. There are no fastenings, but there were ties made of alum tod skin. Astrid Boogie has pointed out that books from early workshops prior 1587 tended to have pasteboard covers and ties instead of hook clasp fastening. Most remarkably, It has the same two stamps on front and on back as MS-558. David before the Lord and the Annunciation. The borders around depict Roman heroes, poets and generals, and the outer edge is made of stylized antique capitals. Actually, almost all the stamps are the same as MS-558. Thus, it is most probable that this book was bound in an earlier bookbinding workshop in Bergen, that could have been taken over by the OH master. Thus, the overall construction of the two Bergen manuscripts and the use of stamps that possibly originated from the workshop of Jakob Krause show that they were made by the same hand or in the same workshop and followed the principles of the German school of binding, possibly Saxonian. The use of gilding, elements of the coat of arms of Saxony and personal OH stamp seemed to say that the bookbinder was intentionally promoting himself and the quality of his work in his new town of Bergen. Through this study, two more books were identified as most probably coming from Bergen workshop, Librar 282 from 1585, that could have been bound in the earlier tradition inherited by the OH master, and Librar Q14 from 1606, that could have been done during the last days of the Bergen workshop. Thank you for your kind attention.